Hi, the Pearl X technique is one of the important techniques that every motion designer should know. However, when the word Pearl X is heard, most people would think of making the layer 3D and panning the camera. But in this video, I'll teach you a Pearl X technique which is more flexible and you can give as much depth as you want. Before we dive into the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and share this video with your friends. And if you're interested in motion graphics and after effects and want to start with the basics before progressing to advanced techniques, don't forget to check out my Motion Hero Masterclass. I want to create this scene using the Prolex technique where closer objects move faster while distance objects move more slowly and overall it would give a good depth to the scene. Ok, without further ado, let's start. I open the start comp. The first thing that I need to do is create the fences. So I select the fence layer. I make it solo. First and foremost, all I would need is a shape like this so I can create proper fences by repeating it. I've already made this shape before. I open the position and create a keyframe for it at the start of the timeline. I place it right here. Let me open the content. I hide the shape of the shadow for now so I can work on the fence better. Then I go to the second sinks and I move the layer to this side of the scene. Let me enable title action save as well. As you can see the layer moves across the screen in the 6 seconds. Once that's done I apply the echo effect to it. I set the echo operator to maximum and the number of echoes to 50. Then I set the echo time so I can align the distance between each echo with precision. Now as you can see the fences are made. I go to the second sync so that the fences are fully visible at the beginning of the animation. Then I play from here. As you can see the fences repeat flawlessly. It's good to note that when I go to the middle of the animation which is second 3, the first fences should be right in the middle. To do that I select the layer and move this keyframe to the right so this part of the fence would be right in the middle. It's good. Then once again I fix the echo time. Let's see how it looks. It's very good. Ok after that it's time to work on its shadow. I make it visible and create a keyframe for its path in the beginning. In the beginning the shadow of the fence should be strange towards the left. To do it precisely, I create a ruler right here. I right click on it and enter 1920 so it would be exactly on the edge of the screen. And then I add to it 1000. I think 500 more would be better. And I place the shadow right where it is. Then I go to the end of the animation and place another ruler right here. I enter 0 so it would be placed on the left edge of the screen. Then I enter minus 1500 so that the shadow I stretched on the left side is also stretched the same amount on the other side. I select these two points and then place them right here. I go to the third second and as you can see the shadow is exactly at the center and it's not angled like the other ones. I go to the second six and play so we can see how it looks so far. It looks very nice. After that I need two other shadows for these two lines. I've already made that before, just place two strokes right here without any animation. Ok, after that let's work on this ways. Let me place its anchor point at the center. At the start I create a keyframe for its position and I place it here and since these raisins are a bit in front of the fences, their movement is faster. For that I go back by 4 frames and here I move the waist to the left. I add the echo effect to it. I set this to 25, maximum 
And for the echo time, I think this much is enough. I also make the background and floor layers visible so I can see the results better. Let's see how it looks. I think this speed is a little bit slow. Here I move it to the left a bit so the vases will move faster in comparison with the fences during the animation. Now let's work on animating this lamp post. Let me make just this layer solo. I hide its shadow for now. I create a keyframe for the position and another keyframe for this curved path. And another one for the position of this lamp shape. I open the lamp layer and create a keyframe for its position. I hit U so I can see the keyframes and move the keyframes to the start of the timeline. Then I move the layer out of the scene. Since this layer is in front of the waistens, the speed should also be greater. So for that, I go to this marker, which is second five, and move this layer to the left side of the screen. On this side, this curved line should be flipped. So I select this point, I hit Ctrl A so all the points would be selected. Then I hit Ctrl T and drag this and place it in the middle. And while holding the left click, I hold Ctrl 2 so the path would be flipped. And then by holding Shift and dragging it to the left, I move it where it should be. After that, I also animate the position of the lamp. And then move these keyframes to the end of the animation. Let's check out the animation. As you can see, it looks like a 3D lamp post. In the beginning, the lamp is on the right, then it goes to the middle, and then in the end, it goes to the left. After doing this, let's work on the shadow of the lamp post. I create a keyframe for the path of the shadow in the beginning. I select these points and drag them where the ruler is. Then I go to the end of the animation and place them here. Let's check it out. Note that when the front view of the lamp post appears, it should be placed exactly in the middle of the scene. So I have to adjust it a little bit. I move the position of this keyframe to the right a little bit so the lamp post would be exactly in the middle of the scene when the indicator is in the middle of the animation, which is second 25. I also change the shadows so it would be symmetrical. Once that's done, I add the echo effect to it. I set this to maximum and the number to 25. I go to the end and tweak the echo time. I tweak it so that there will be only three lamp posts at the same time in the scene. Let's check it out and see how it is. Let me make the fences and their shadows visible too and check if the lamp post shadow and fence shadow match or not. I think it's very good. Then let's work on animating the string lights. I've already parented the string lines to the lamp post. At the beginning of the animation, it's alright. But at the end of the animation, which is here, as you can see, the lamp post is out of the scene, but the string lights are still in the scene. To fix this problem, I create a keyframe for the position of the string lights. Let me first select the string layer and stretch it so it reaches the next lamp post. So I select all the points, hit Ctrl T and stretch it to here. After that, I move forward up until where the next lamp post is out of the scene and then I move the string lights out of the scene too, about here. Then I check the animation. 
As you can see, this string is moved along with the lamppost at all times. Okay, once that's done, I just copy and paste the echo thing from the lamppost thread so all the other string would be made as well. Let's see how it looks. It's very nice. Now let's animate this flower in the foreground. Since they're pretty close to the camera, their speed should be even more. I go to the sort and create a keyframe for its position and move it out of the scene from the right and then on the third second, I move it out of the scene from the left side. Then apply the echo effect to this layer too and increase the number of echoes to 25. And then I set the echo time. I hold control so I can tweak it slowly. I set it in a way that only one flower is visible at a time in the scene, not two or more. Let me make the wings visible too. I limit the work area right here so the beginning of the animation starts from here. And finally, let's work on animating the floor lines. I solo the layer. I hide the layers that I don't need for now. This is the floor layer. I created it from before and using the taper of the stroke, I made the tail thinner. I've parented it to the fence layer, so the animation would be the same as the fence. Now I just have to add depth to it. To do that, I open the layer. I create a keyframe for its path. In the beginning, I move this point here. And in the second sinks, I move it right here. So in the second three, it would be roughly in the middle, which is right. After doing this, I also apply the echo effect to it. Echo operator there to maximum, number of echoes to 100. And I tweak its echo time. Let's go further and see the results. As you can see, the perspective isn't quite right. So for that, I select this point, I hold shift and hit the left arrow key. I do the same for the beginning of the animation. I select this and hold shift then hit the right arrow key. I go to the second sinks and now let's see how it is. I think I still have to add even more perspective. I select this, hold shift and hit right arrow key. Then I go to the end, hold shift and hit the left arrow key. Now let's see how it looks. It looks much better. I think it's pretty good. Let me make all the layers visible so I can see the final results better. There is only one simple problem and that is when the string lights are in front of the sun, they're not visible anymore. To fix that, I duplicate the string layer. I apply the set matte effect to it. I open it and hide the line and change the color of the lamps to this blue color. And then in the set matte effect, I select the sun layer. So this layer would only be visible in the sun area. Now, as you can see, the string lights change color in front of the sun and they're visible. If you're interested in learning more tips and tricks in motion design, I recommend watching this playlist. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.